So we're going to start off today with our keynote. Now, I am not the keynote today. Uh, every year, we try to get Matt's to speak. Uh, welcome to Keep Ruby We Are 2017. Uh, welcome to Keep Ruby We Are 2018. Uh, <laughs> so every year, like. To keep, uh, keep this. <laughs> forever. Yeah, forever. <laughs> so, we, we weren't sure what year we were going to end this, so we actually just recorded Matt saying, keep, like, welcome to Keep Ruby Weird, and then a whole bunch of years after that so that we could, we could like, play it each year. Now, this year, this year uh, we wanted to try and get Matt to record something special for us uh, so that we could play it for the very last year, but we weren't, able to, we weren't able to get him to record anything for us. So, unfortunately, we're just going to have to do it live. So, I want to welcome... <laughs> Matt's to the stage. Good morning. All right, so we're gonna do. We're gonna play the little laptop dance here because since this was a surprise, we did not test his equipment. So bear with us. Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, I was not supposed to be here, maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is the conference. Keep really weird. It should work. Okay. Is Ruby weird? <laughs> uh, what's your opinion? Ruby weird? Yes or no? Yes? Okay. Ruby's neutral. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby is only abusable. So the Ruby is weird because we are weird. <laughs> Weirdness in our mind. So we are weird. So we program Ruby weirdly, so the Ruby is weird. But actually, I admit, some part of Ruby is weird. So that I'm, I'm going to talk about this weird thing today. Okay, the weird thing is the keyword arguments. Uh, in Ruby 2, which was released in uh, 2013, which is the 20 year anniversary of the Ruby language. And then uh, we introduced the keyword arguments. So in keyword arguments, we can look like this. System, something called comments. But uh, when we failed, uh, we return exception instead of the, instead of new. So that we can uh, provide the keyword arguments, like uh, options. The many other languages have keyword arguments as well. Like a Python has keyword arguments, Smalltalk has some sort of keyword arguments, Object C and Swift, for example. So the each language are different. For example, Python, so they don't provide a special kind of keyword arguments. Every argument can be keyword argument in Python, like this. Okay, def foo A B C defines the argument named A and B and C, so that you can call the, those function that's providing the name of the argument. So you don't have to specify any uh, keyword things in the method definition. You can just call, call them by name of the argument. So that uh, we call it the one, the C equals two, B equals three, that makes the one, three, and two, because the, the, the two was in, uh, assigned to the C argument, and the three is assigned to the B argument, right? You understandable? So this is cr quite a uh, unique Python program I have written. Okay, <laughs> small, in small talk, the keywords are part of the message or method name, like this. The, you can put the the number 42 at the position zero, so that that works like a uh, re bracket zero equals 42 in Ruby. That in this program, uh, put an at is a part of the method name. We uh, often call it the put, at, put column at column. So this is the method name. So the in Smalltalk, the, the, these kind of the keywords 
are very uh, crucial, it's very uh, mandatory in the, in the language spec. This kind of the characteristic of the method name is inherited by the language of uh, Objective-C and Swift. But in Ruby, keyword arguments are mere hash at the bottom of the argument. So that you can, uh, P is a method, you, you know that. <laughs> P is the method to, to, to print the argument. When you call this P method with the, the, the keyword argument, you can just print the hash. Weird. <laughs> uh, let me explain the, back, the background. In Ruby 1.9, 1, 1 we introduced the two things. One is a symbol hash. The second is the expanded hash in arguments. Symbol hash means the hash like this. The who column one, bar column two, instead of the column who arrow one, column bar arrow two. This is the simplified version of the, the symbols as a key. Right. Expanded hash in arguments means like this. Instead of writing the one column, the hash, we can write the one column for, uh, the inside of the brace. So that we introduce these things, things to these things to mimic the keyword argument. So that in Ruby 1.9, one we can do the, some kind of uh, put the keyword argument ha hash as the optional argument then parse the, parse the keyword argument, like uh, using the merge or something like that. Uh, this is, but uh, you know, the, that, this kind of the manual key parsing keyword argument is kind of pain. So that we introduced the, the keyword arguments in Ruby 2.0 to avoid manual parsing. Uh, for example, the, to implement the previous one, manual argument, like this one, instead of writing this one, in Ruby 2, we can do like what's, like this, much better. But still weird. <laughs> because what should happen? Uh, we define the method M with a mandatory argument A and the keyword argument, the, uh, the, the option, uh, default value 10, and the print the argument A and the key value, key value. So that when we called M key column 5, what shall we get? Yes, <laughs> because this is the hash, so that this hash is assigned to A, and uh, because we have the optional key, the default value is given, so that we, we get uh, <laughs> the hash and 10. What? <laughs> Detail, you can call. Actually, you can call like this: key column five as hash with the key column hash. The A called key column five, and the key axis is the empty, so the default value is used. Then we get the, the hash and ten. Yeah, it's easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the pop code two was. Okay, uh, H is a, the, the hash. Then print the hash, you get hash. What, should, what would happen 
when we call the M with H. It's easy too. <laughs> it happened like this. Because the, the keyword argument is the hash at the bottom of the, the argument list, so they, it will be considered as the keyword hash. So the keyword argument is used, then key will be five. Easy. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> What should happen here? Okay, we have the optional argument, which, which default value is the empty hash, then the default, uh, the keyword argument, which is default to 10. Then when we call the key column 42, what should happen? Anyone? <laughs> 42? Uh, 42 to 10? The, 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 the answer is like this. <laughs> because the keyword arguments were bind before the keyword ar optional arguments. <laughs> so the, the, this keywords are considered as the real keyword arguments, so that the key will be 42. Then the, we don't have the optional argument, so the, the default value is used. <laughs> the empty, empty hash and the 42 is the answer. <laughs> the, we, I keep going. <laughs> so that <laughs> we have the optional, uh, optional argument, which defaults to 42. And uh, accept the, the keyword argument as hash, and then print them. So when we provide the empty hash, <laughs> and the empty hash as the keyword argument, what shall we get? <laughs> Too empty. Uh, two empty keyword arguments. Uh, the correct answer, the, the answer is like this. <laughs> because <laughs> because uh, M, the expand Expanding the uh, empty keyword hash will uh, vanished, will be vanished because it's empty, right? And then we have the only one empty hash at the bottom of the keyword arguments, and the uh, Coley interpret this as a <laughs> keyword argument. <laughs> then we don't the Coley don't see the optional argument, so that it's assigned to forty two then the keyword, empty keyword argument. It's, it's kind of insane. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, was, it works mostly okay, <laughs> but we have some weird corner cases. And then, oh, uh, it's uh, kind of confusing with the hash and keyword. So that, yeah, I can say it is half-baked solution at most. <laughs> and then, yeah, the, the Ruby design or the design of the anything, like including programming language, uh, it is kind of difficult. 
we have a lot of the constraint and restriction. And then the, the biggest one is the compatibility model. So that it is, it is tempting for us language designers to fix the, the errors like, like, like the above. So that, you know, but uh, the changing behavior, changing existing behavior might cross the existing software. That, that would not be very happy for users. For example, so that in age of the Ruby 1.8 and 1.9, so that I had to introduce some kind of the incompatibility, incompatibility <laughs> to the language because of the, the Unicode support and the, the, virtual the beta version machine. And then, but uh, you have to migrate your, your application from Ruby 1.8 to Ruby 1.9 so that it is, in some cases, it is this kind of burden. So that, that some people kept using Ruby 1.8 for, for years, maybe five years or something. So that we had some kind of the community division for years by this kind of the, the compatibility issue. And then in worse, the, the people in Python community had that kind of the, the division of the Python 2 people and the Python 3 people for more than 10 years. And then they declared that the end of the life of the Python 2 in year 2020, which is two years ahead. So that, yeah, Python 3 was released in, I don't remember exactly, but the, probably the 15 years ago, so that there are nearly 20 years of the community division. This is quite unfortunate. It's a kind of tragedy. Yeah. And then, yeah, we have Power 5 and Power 6. This is a different story. The Power 6 is totally different programming language. Anyway, the, we had some kind of tragedy in many programming language communities. So that you don't like the the code breakage. You know, you, you love to upgrade your software, your, your, your language, but uh, you don't want to fix or modify your application to just, to just upgrade your language. But at the same time, you don't like the, the confusing behavior like that. So the, which you hate me more? <laughs> this is the trade-off. This is the trade-off. Code breakage or confusing behavior. So the compatibility issues is very big. Like, a, you know, that kind of the small change could break your software. For example, we have the spam method, which takes the, the hash as the, the arguments. But that these hash can include the, uh, 10 to 11 which uh, remap the, the file descriptor, which key is not the symbol, so which cannot be the, uh, the keyword arguments. Or, like this example is the, the very boilerplate uh, example of the create elements of the HTML file. It's, it's, it's kind of like a DSL. So that take the name and the attributes, right? This is quite easy. But uh, if you want uh, to add the uh, new keyword argument children to, to ex express the, the children of the HTM tree, but uh, this time, this href is not the keyword argument, so that we get uh, the, this kind of the, the argument error. Uh, we, ha we surely we will have the, some kind of the the compatibility errors uh, unexpectedly when we fix anything. So what shall we do? We have several options. Uh, we have three, I, I will put, uh, explain you about the three options to the keyword arguments. The first one is the keeping keyword argument weird as it is uh, out there. The, the second is the Key, the, some, in, we're introducing something named the keyword hash. Just the third one is the 
totally separate the keyword arguments. Okay, let me explain it one by one. The keeping keyword arguments weird, like as they are, is we have pros and cons. It's a trade-off. So the, since we don't change anything, so we will not have the compatibility issue. This is great, but uh, we have the drawbacks. The keeping of our confusing behaviors it is quite amusing, <laughs> but confusing. And then uh, the second option is introducing keyword hash. That means the uh, expanded hashing arguments will be the keyword arguments. This is a kind of an example. Okay, the, take the keyword arguments. Okay, a colon one is expanded uh, hash argument in uh, the argument list. So that, that take the, the keyword arguments, then the, say you can tell this is the keyword or not. Keyword arguments or not. So that we, when you, we call this form, above form, you can get that this, this is the keyword arguments. And the second form is the, you know, the, the hash wrapped in the braces, so that it would be not, it would not be the keyword arguments. So that, and then we prohibit the known keyword expanded hash, like, uh, you know, the one arrow something things with a braces. So the, uh, we, you will see that this one will be error, and then instead use this, the, uh, the wrap in the, in the braces. So there's always a trade-off. So the pros is that the, this thing is relatively simple. The difference between the current behavior and the new behavior is minimal. So the uh, relatively easier uh, to implement. And the, the transition is easier than the, the latter one. And then simpler argument delegation. That means that, okay, when you delegate the argument to the different method, currently we do this. That takes the argument splat, then they take the block as an argument, then delegate these arguments and blocks. But uh, with the separate keyword arguments, we had to do the, okay, we have to delegate the, the keyword arguments. So that, yeah, in my opinion, two things is annoying but okay, but three, three things is too much. Three things are too much. Uh, the, this, okay, cons for the, the keyword hash, has uh, of course the, the compatibility issues, especially the non keyword expanded hash in the arguments. And uh, any behavior change would cause the error in applications. And then, uh, especially expanded hashes, and especially max ones. And then uh, keyword hash can be leaked. So the, this one, is the, the leaking keyword arguments. So the, the foo returns its keyword, uh, keyword hash assigned to the, the, the variable kw, then calling bar with the keyword hash cause uh, matches the, this, this keyword arguments and returns one. This is kind of confusing. But uh, yeah, I think it's tolerable for most of the users. And then the, the biggest drawback of this option is it is hard to optimize. You know, you have to allocate one hash per call when you call, use the, the, uh, the keyword arguments. But uh, there, there can be a room to optimize, but uh, this kind of the keyword hash requires the hash object in your software. That means that you have to, you must allocate one hash per call. 
The, the last option is introducing the separated keyword arguments. The keyword arguments never match with the normal arguments. So the prohibit non-keyword expanded hashes. That is the, you know, the benefit of this option is the most same behavior. You know, we can eliminate this kind of the confusing behavior of the current keyword arguments. It, yeah, at least less confusing. And then there is room for optimizations. But uh, it also has the drawbacks. And uh, it is, it would be the huge compatibility uh, issue. Uh, uh, in, in compatibility, I mean. And then uh, the behavior change will be bigger when we choose this option. So that, like, uh, and the argument delegation must be like this instead of this. So that we have three options, as I explained. Key, keyword, arguments, where, like as there. <laughs> you know, did this confusion is the very corner cases. So that, yeah, we can ignore. <laughs> or maybe we can introduce uh, sometimes the keyword hash, and uh, which introduce to, uh, which can solve uh, these weird behavior using the information, the, the last one is the keyword hash or not. The, the last and then the biggest option is to separate the keyword arguments altogether. Okay, do you understand the three options? Okay, you do. Okay, think about 30 seconds. Think about them. Uh, this is the option. These are the options. Keep current behavior as it is and introduce the keyword hash to distinguish the hash, add, I mean the keyword arguments as a hash and the normal arguments. And the third one, third one is the separate keyword arguments altogether to by fixing the language themselves. Uh, the, they, are tra they have trade-offs. The, the first one is, you know, we don't touch them, we don't change them. We can keep compatibility, of course, but uh, we keep this kind of the confusing behavior. First one. And then the second one can uh, solve many confusing behavior but and simpler but uh, it's kind of primitive like uh, you can see the the keyword argument hash as a ob as an object and then the the last one is more sophist sophisticated but uh, it is a little bit more com uh, complex to implement but uh, there's a room to optimize the performance Okay, these three options. Okay, you understand that? Okay, raise your hand. <laughs> so that, uh, I'm pretty uh, interested in your opinion. So that if you have, uh, you prefer the first one, unchanged keyword arguments. Uh, raise your hand. If you for prefer first one, confusing but, but compatible. Okay, uh, maybe, I don't know, one third of the users <laughs> or more? Oh yeah, it's, it's more than I, I expected. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, the, but the, this conference is the key proof of weird. <laughs> so that, yeah, it's complying to the theme. <laughs> okay, the, okay, did you make your mind? Okay. How about you prefer the second one? One, two, three. Okay, very few of them. But not, not less, more than 10 person, 10 people are prefer the second one. Okay, how about the last one? More sophisticated one. Oh. It's more than I expected. 
Okay, you love the changes. <laughs> Courageous. <laughs> okay, thank you. This is great variable input for me. <laughs> In any way, uh, I tell you, uh, avoid non-keyword expanded hash in your, your, in your Ruby program. And then, yeah, the, when you get back home, so that, yeah, fix them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, in summary, uh, compatibility is pretty much important because, the, you know, the, if your, your language or your library or your framework or whatever the third party thinks breaks compatibility, you will be punished for no reason, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, it's kind of pain. So that don't do that unless you have very uh, apparent reason. Uh, changes are very tempting. Yeah, I, it's, it's tempting for me to break the language every day. <laughs> it's, it's quite tempting. Yeah, if I change this behavior and break the compatibility, I can make this the Ruby language far better than the far better or something like that. I f I feel every day, <laughs> but I don't do that usually <laughs> because I I'm not going to punish you guys <laughs> for using Ruby. <laughs> so that. You know, the keeping compatibility itself is designed so that you know, the programmer is fundamentally designed so that you design your software, I design my software, my, I design my language, and that you are users of my language. Okay, you use my many gems, and then the gem, gem authors are designers. And then you create your applications, you uh, users of your application, it's, you know, the, it's, it's kind of layered. The, the higher layer uh, author can punish their users for no reason. But uh, don't do that. It's quite tempting, I admit, but don't do that for no, for no reason. Okay, uh, we have a weird design in our language and in our application or library or something like anything. And for example, we have the weird uh, keyword arguments. But there are reasons. There are, there are reasons. We have constraints, we have uh, the restriction, we have historical reason or anything. But it, and, uh, you can fix them, but uh, we have trade-off. So that we can easily fix them by punishing my users. Or we can fix them but providing some kind of migration path to the, the future version or something like that. And then Ruby 3 may address keyword uh, weirdness. <laughs> but uh, I don't know yet. But I, I'm making up uh, my mind by from your valuable input. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but at least, at least we can tell we promise to keep, mo keep moving forward. Because you know, Ruby is not really the language, the mere language. And uh, Ruby is the community. Okay. Ruby cannot be Ruby without you, the community. So if no one uses Ruby, and so there, you know, there is virtually no Ruby. The Ruby can be Ruby uh, along with gems, frameworks, your applications, and the you users, you programmers. The these are very valuable for the Ruby, the community. So that you know, we don't have any initiation to the Ruby community, and we don't really have the membership of the Ruby community. You don't have to declare you as a Ruby community member in any sense. 
you just use Ruby, you just like Ruby, or maybe even you love Ruby, but uh, you don't have to declare anything. So that, that means the Ruby cannot expect you, community members, a loyalty. So that you can, you can leave when, whenever you want. You can go to, say, Python, JavaScript, uh, Elixir, whatever if we want. So that, that point is we, the, the Ruby community, the, the virtual existence Ruby community, have to provide you some kind of attraction. So that, that means if we have open source software, we have to uh, make language better or make language uh, ecosystem better by providing tools, gems, uh, frameworks, use cases, or maybe some blog path or something. We have to attract people. This is crucial. And then, uh, on the contrary, the punishing users by providing, uh, by introducing some kind of incompatibility can be pain for the users. And it can be motivation to leave. But uh, at the same time, the, the, the change will attract people for, for providing better language. So that we, it's, it's quite difficult forecast, but uh, we try our best to move forward. At least we move forward to provide the better things, better language, better community, to let you play with Ruby, so that find out weird things, and uh, playing with the, uh, the Ruby behavior, and they keep Ruby weird, and uh, writing your applications. And uh, I believe playful mind is the core of the Ruby. So that I declare I will keep Ruby users weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is my, some kind of, you know, See, mystery, my mystery talk. And then this is the end of the talk. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. Thank you, Matt. I enjoyed your presentation. I like the, um, the ideas around changing the hashes. I think that all of them have very, like all of the different options have very good uh, Arguments. <laughs> I think I think we have some time for questions. Does anyone want to grill Matt's on stuff? <laughs> like his production code. Yes. Okay. Ah, you're at the opposite side of the. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> Can you talk about? an interesting breaking change that you wanted to make that you haven't? Uh, the, the one thing is the, I, the, the thing I abandoned four years ago was the, the, changing, the changing the scope of the local variable. Uh, in Ruby, the local variable, the local variable is, is scope is limited to the block or the, the method or the class the, in which the, the, the local variable is first assigned. But uh, in many cases, so you want to use the local variable out of the block. For example, like, a, you know, there you find some uh, object in the loop, so you use the, the, that object out of the loop. So in that case, in current Ruby, you have to assign the, that variable First, the, the local variable equals nil, then assign to the, the variable in the, in the loop, then use the variable after the loop, right? But uh, uh, I try to introduce the, some kind of the scope hoisting, like Java, JavaScript does, so that if you use that local variable out of the block, so you can declare the, the block scope one step out, one step order, 
so that you don't have to assign the local variable equal nil at the top of the loop. But uh, yeah, when I first think of that, that idea, it was, it was good, but uh, after that, it was kind of confusing. So that I just abandoned the idea. <laughs> I, had, uh, I had those, kind, I have a long list of these kinds of crazy ideas. And uh, I abandoned most of them. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> I guess making that change was too much, too too big a scope. <laughs> thank you, thank you for providing us visibility. <laughs> Is this a fun championship or something? <laughs> No, no, this is Friday morning. <laughs> uh, que more questions, questions. I think we have, we have s some time. So preferably somebody in that corner so I can run <laughs> to the complete other side of the room. Anyone? OK, I get, oh, wait, was there one down here? Uh? No? I cannot see you. All right, let's end this. Thank you, Matt. Thank you.